If you were to ride on the fifth highest paved road in the world, the highest in North America, what personal electric mobility device would you take? The one wheel or an electric unicycle? We couldn't decide, so we took both. And here's what happened. We took a trip to the highest road in America, to the top of Mount Evans, 14,260 feet, so we could spend time with family who were visiting from sea level. In the bottom right hand corner, you will see our altitude from time to time as we make our ascent and then our descent. The nice thing about personal electric mobility devices is you can just throw them in the trunk of your car and use them as you need them. And on this day, when we neared the top of the mountain, we pulled over, I put on my safety gear and decided to take the electric unicycle, my Kingsong 16S, up the remainder of the road while my son drove the car up. People drive cars, they ride motorcycles, they even ride bicycles up and down this amazing mountain. The views are stunning, and you can get fairly close and personal with some of the native animals. You may be wondering why I chose to ride the electric unicycle over the one wheel for the final road ascent. And that's because I feel safer on my electric unicycle. If you look here, I'm going over these expansion cracks. Yes, the one wheel would be able to go over these, but it just takes a little more tender loving care and attention. The thick tire of the one wheel can be thrown off balance if you hit a crack or bump improperly, which can toss you from the board. This happened to my son recently during a vacation in San Diego, resulting in our worst fall and injury ever on a one wheel. If you haven't seen that video yet, go check it out. A lot of you guys left comments that you can prevent falls like that by bending your knees and being ready to absorb any shocks that may come your way. But honestly, keeping your knees bent on the one wheel during long, long stretches like we were planning on riding on this day, just not feasible. This is the highest paved road in North America, and we are now the, near the top. I'm here on my Kingsong 16S electric unicycle. And I had my one wheel. I was going to give my one wheel a try too, but wasn't sure about going up and down these steep hills. And there's some of these, there's some cracks. This is possibly the first time an electric unicycle has gone up this 14 or 14, over 14,000 feet, Mount Evans. Hey, what's up, guys? You got some uh, wool? What do they want to do? Uh, go to the top. Yeah, let's go to the top. No. We didn't drive all this way not to make it to the top. Come on. We're already 14,000 feet up. Let's finish it up. You can wear my jacket. When you finally reach the parking lot at the top, you're going to find this sign about altitude sickness. The higher you go up, the thinner the air is. And because of that, people can be at risk for altitude sickness at elevations greater than 8,000 feet. Denver is called the Mile High City, and it's at 5,280 feet. Symptoms include dizziness, headache, muscle ache, nausea, but it can rapidly progress if ignored to pulmonary edema, fluid in the lungs, and worst cases, to cerebral it's edema snowing. and swelling of the brain. From the parking lot that you see down there, you can take a short little hike to reach the very top of Mount Evans. On this summer day in July, you can see it started snowing while we were up there. We made it, Tom, your first 14er. I know. If you've ever spent much time in the mountains of Colorado, then you may know of a thing called the 14er. A 14er represents any of the 53 peaks in Colorado with an elevation over 14,000 feet. And there are a lot of people who like to climb them. So here we are at the top of Mount Evans, 14,200 something feet, snowing, it's cold, dark clouds. Beautiful.
Okay, let's do a couple loops. Oh, whoa, it's a mountain goat. Right around. For reference, the tallest mountain in North America is Denali in Alaska, formerly known as Mount McKinley, at 20,310 feet. The tallest mountain in the world, Mount Everest, at 29,029 feet. Because Denali and Mount Everest are not within a few hours drive from my home, we decided to go visit Mount Evans, which comes in at a humble 14,260 feet. Mount Evans is just 60 miles from Denver. And as you drive to Mount Evans from Denver, you'll go through many roads and switchbacks to get to the top of this amazing mountain. You'll travel through 9,000 feet of elevation gain, and you'll travel through five climate zones to get to the top of Colorado's 14th highest peak. Riding down from the top of Mount Evans on the one wheel, we encountered a problem. The biggest problem with the one wheel was actually our fault. We started the day with a full battery. If you don't know, the one wheel charges its battery when going downhill using something called regenerative braking. Much like electric cars such as Tesla's and even on my electric unicycle and my electric skateboard, the one wheel has regenerative braking. It's a way to charge the battery when you're braking so that you can travel farther and have more fun. The one wheel has a battery protection mechanism to prevent overcharging. Problem is, this protection mechanism is kind of flawed because once the battery reaches full capacity, the board, in order to protect the battery from overcharging, will shut down. And what shuts down you nosedive. So the fear of regenerative braking and overcharging the battery, nice. which okay, could lead to down. board shutting off and nosediving and falling off a 14,000 foot mountain, kept us from going very far on the one wheel. We tried to ride up and down the mountain to drain the battery, but as soon as we'd ride it back down, the battery would charge up again and we'd have to go back up. My son gave up, he rode back to the car, and he decided he would see if he'd be able to catch me driving down the mountain in the car as I descended on my electric unicycle. Lesson learned, next time we try this, we'll start with a low battery on the one wheel and we'll see how far we can go before the battery is charged to full capacity. Can you pass me, Ethan? Too bumpy. I'm going super slow. Yeah, I get that ice shot. Close to the snow. You're at 96%. We'll go to this next uh, corner here, okay? Bump. Riding on narrow roads at around 14,000 feet with bighorn sheep, mountain goats, automobiles, cyclists, motorcyclists, it has its inherent dangers. Add to that the potential poor road conditions. When it comes to deciding between the electric unicycle and the one wheel, if I'm going to ride a one wheeled device, I like the bigger diameter wheel of the electric unicycle. It has increased power and overall stability and speed that gets me through these windy roads. There's some bumps here. You all right? The less I have to worry about when I'm riding, the more I can focus on riding safely and enjoying the scenery. The audible alerts that the electric unicycle has to let me know if I'm riding at a dangerous speed or if I have a dangerous battery level 
That gives me an added peace of mind. On the one wheel, I have to have my phone connected, and sometimes I can't hear the audible alerts through my phone. At this part in our journey, my son and I part ways. He continues up, back to the top, and to the parking lot so he can get the car. I turn around on my electric unicycle, and I start heading down the mountain. And the race begins. We want to see how far I can get down the mountain on my electric unicycle before my son can catch me while driving the Subaru. At this point, I'm just under 14,000 feet in elevation. I said earlier that I chose the electric unicycle to ride down the mountain because I feel safer on it, and that's true. But don't get me wrong, I still have to remain vigilant of the road conditions when I ride. But compared to the one wheel, I feel much more in control and stable. When tackling cracks and bumps on the electric unicycle, it's less of an issue and I do love the audible alerts that will warn me of impending doom. I've said before that I have a complex relationship with the one wheel. While I love the device and it's a ton of fun, I have had some fairly significant injuries on it. And my son has also had a fairly significant injury on it. Falls will happen. It's not a matter of if you fall, it's a matter of when you fall. It's just the inherent design of the board, the way that you can leverage the board and overpower the motor results in falls. It's just physics. At this point, I come across a group of mountain goats. So I pull over and I think, man, I can frame a great shot. A group of mountain goats, the mountains, the sky, my electric unicycle. Oh yeah, and then the tourist in their big truck. And then the other tourist chasing after the goat the guy with the big cannon like camera. And so I say, well, forget it. I'm just gonna walk right in there and get some footage. These mountain goats are amazing. They live up here in this barren area. This is their home. You can tell the mountain goats from the bighorn sheep because they have the long white hair and the black spiked horns. Whereas the bighorn sheep, which we'll come across later, they have short brown hair. Sometimes they have white bellies, and their horns are brown, and the males have those big curved horns. With my son driving down the mountain trying to catch me as I descend on my electric unicycle, my focus was not speed, but caution. I've sped up this footage, however, just so that this video isn't too long and too boring. I took my time and I averaged anywhere from 12 to 16 miles per hour during the descent. The only time I felt the urge to really go fast was when I had a challenger, this guy here. Now that is a bighorn sheep, a female. When I turn around the corner here, that sheep decides to take off. And man, those things are fast. I had the urge to try to go fast and keep up with her, but there was no chance. For anyone that's watched my videos or been subscribed to my channel, you'll know I'm a big fan of the one wheel. What you probably don't know though, is that I'm also a big fan of my electric unicycle. What is it like to ride an electric unicycle? If you've never been on one, the best way I could describe it is, once you're proficient, once you feel comfortable on an electric unicycle, then it really does feel like being on a roller coaster. I think people love to ride roller coasters because of the speed. And to add to the thrill of the ride, oftentimes they'll lift their arms in the air and wave to get that free feeling as they race through the ride. 
Growing up, during my junior and senior years of high school, I would save up the money that I earned from my job at Baskin Robbins, and I would buy a season pass to Disneyland. It would cost $100 for a year pass. Some of my favorite rides were Space Mountain and the Matterhorn. They were roller coaster type rides where you felt like you were flying. The Matterhorn ride at Disneyland is a simulated bobsled type ride that sends you flying through a man-made Matterhorn mountain that's there in the Disneyland theme park. Coming down Mount Evans, I couldn't help but feel like I was on the Matterhorn ride again, just like I was as a kid, with the beautiful views, mountain vistas, and snowpack zipping past me. When people ask me what it's like to ride an electric unicycle, I have to use an analogy that I once saw in an electric unicycle discussion board. The electric unicycle is like a roller coaster. Only you control where you go. I love that. You're forward facing, you can go fast, you don't hold on to anything, and to add to the thrill and freedom of the ride, you can wave your arms as you do so. And while you don't go upside down like you may on a roller coaster, you do get to control where you're going. It's like a personal roller coaster. It's an amazing feeling. I hope you enjoyed this ride with me. I know this video has been longer than most of my other videos, but I just couldn't cut out any more footage than I already did. There was just too much cool stuff. The scenery, zipping past the ice and the rocks on the side, looking at the clouds and the rain. It was just a fun, fun ride, and I wanted to share that with you guys. If you guys liked it and you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If you think there's something I can do better next time, let me know in the comments below. As always, I appreciate you guys. If you're interested in supporting, check out the website below for eWheels. That's where I get my electric unicycle. If you buy something from their website and through that link, that helps to support the channel. At this point in the video, I pull over because my GoPro is running out of batteries and I wanted fresh batteries for the remainder of the trip down. This is where my son finally catches up with me. And so I put the electric unicycle in my car and we head back down. How you doing, Tessa?